वेलकम टू कैंडिड कन्फेशन पावर्ड बाय सुदीप ऑडियो डॉट कॉम हाई आई एम शांतनु होदलीकर आई एम अ साउंड इंजीनियर आई स्टार्टेड ऑफ बाय करियर बींग स्टूडियो इंजीनियर एंड रिकॉर्डेड मैनी रॉक एंड रोल बैंड जैज बैंड बिकॉज दैट्स दैट वॉज वेर माई इंटरेस्ट ले बट द कमर्शल्स वर ऑलवेज इन एट दैट टाइम इन एडवर्टाइजिंग did thousands of jingles and couple of film songs uh, which was not really my uh, my interest it's not that i didn't like it it's not really my interest my interest was working with rock bands and jazz bands and pop and stuff like that non film music and uh, the first really popular band that i recorded with uh, and mixed was a band called Rock Machine. They had already had recorded their first album uh, under Nakul Kamte, who was my mentor and my senior when I joined the studio business. So, I was responsible for recording Rock Machine's second album. I had already known them as friends for a long time. I was the house engineer at Music Room. Uh, they had done their first album. I think the first album was called Rock and Roll Renegade. It was done at Music Room. the second album called the second coming was also done at music room they wanted to keep that continuity they had the familiarity with the studio plus they knew me as an engineer so i recorded their second album great experience recording it great fun recording it blah 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 album is released it comes out great experience uh, you know great uh, airplay for the band when the band approached me and said listen man you know we used to have our own uh, front of house engineer when we did live gigs and uh, but he's not going to be around anymore uh, why don't you come on the road with us i said you know typical rock and roll fashion i'd love to but i know jack shit about it so he says right hey, listen you knew jack shit about this too right being a studio i said yeah well we'll work with uh, sound rental companies you know and you you'll get the hang just dive into it fearless people that we were in that stage didn't think too much about it you know let's get on the road first gig boom you know i have this massive pa in front of me and just using my instincts and uh, tuning the system to uh, a cd that we are really familiar with to get the cd sounding really nicely in a live situation playing different formats of bands on cds because those days analog mixers analog crossovers analog eq everything was analog nothing was digital in those days uh, working with bins and stacks and stuff like that left and right and oh, there was no surround no subs nothing of that sort at that time most of the times we would probably just have sm57s as microphones and sm58s as microphones and that's probably it if it was a luxury you would probably get a beta 58 for the lead vocalist so which was a big thing or we'd maybe get uh, akg uh, thing d12 or d112 as your kick drum microphone but the rest of the stuff was all 57s and 58s so i said well if that's the way it is that's the way it is console was i think uh, allen and heath or soundcraft uh, i'm not to show analog console and just trying to use the same concepts that you hear in the uh, use in the studio which is keeping in mind the pa and keeping in mind uh, the the acoustics of the venue that you're in play and my first concert was at this iconic venue which is now closed down rang bhavan and it being a amphitheater kind of thing so you used to get the slap back so you get used to working with slap back and then realizing you know later on that when the crowd comes in that slap back will go you know so these are these learning experiences that you took into consideration when you were working with sound and moving from the studio into a live atmosphere it did the concert great you know everyone loved the sound i as the kind of person that i am i am never always happy but if the crowd is happy and the band is happy well that's i'm happy but you hope that you will do a better job at the next concert and that is the process so as time went by you know i started doing other bands and getting you know better equipment to work with and 
finally reaching a point in your life where you say, wow, this is, this is absolutely fantastic. And, you know, I sending riders in and riders uh, at that point of time, 90% of the times were not met. So, you know, now here I am, I'm the celebrated engineer and my, I land up at the venue and we're there at the sound check and we didn't have the liberty in those days of having sound check on one day and then the gig on the next day. It was arrive in the morning, go straight to sound check, finish sound check, maybe have an hour to get freshened up and there's the gig. So there's not much you can do at the point when you land up for sound check if you find gear not there as per your rider. You know, first time you throw a fit, start throwing attitude, it's like, what the fuck is going on? What's this? What's that? Why not there? And the vendor just shrugs his hand and say, it's not there. Now what are you going to do? You obviously, you go back to your roots and you say like, okay, you know, I'm used to working with 58s and 57s. Let me just use that, you know, let's go back to basics. I've had this video on, on Sudeep Audio, getting your basics right. That always falls into place for me. So here again, I had my basics right, which is why I was able to manage to cut things, you know, and wing it when things weren't going right. Because I had my basics absolutely in process. All this leads up to a story where much towards the end of me wanting to move out of the live sound scene, uh, is I think this was 91 or 92, I'm, I can't really remember. I used to do sound for the local jazz yatras too over here in, in Bombay and uh, it was always held at the Rang Bhavan or at the Brabourne Stadium. And there used to be this Dutch engineer uh, by the name of Case Westendorp, who used to come over here and who used to be the stage manager. And we got friendly with him over the years and uh, his company that he used to work for in Holland uh, used to do sound for one of the largest jazz festivals in the world called the North Sea Jazz Festival. Through our association, one, you know, he said, like, Shatru, you should come for the North Sea Jazz Festival. You should work over there. He said, great, I'd love to. So immediately, being close friends, he, said, he called me up. It's like, okay, so what's going to happen is you're coming and working as part of the sound crew. You will not be paid for it because that's your first gig at the uh, North Sea Jazz. It's a massive festival. You know, you have B.B. King and Pat Bethini and, you know, Miles Davis and Santana and all these bands performing over there. And... Uh, he said, you pay your way through, you come over there, we'll look after your boarding and lodging food, you won't get paid, but you'll get that experience of working the North Sea Jazz Festival. Boom, went in over there. Great, landed up over there. Sure thing, he was there as a friend of mine to meet me, took me into accommodation. And this is about one week before the festival actually starts. So he wanted me to be there right from the beginning as a setup. So. At that time, the, this festival used to be held in The Hague. Venue was called the Congress Gebouw. So in this place, there were 13 stages, basically 13 different venues within one enclosure, within one area. So at any given time, there are 13 bands playing at any given time because there are 13 stages. You cannot have one empty stage. So as an audience, if you have chosen band A on stage one, there might be another great band playing on stage two, but you can't see both. So you have to make those choices. Sometimes the choices are very difficult for the audience what to make. So therefore, you get the program almost six months before as to who is playing when and at what stage. So audiences, when they buy tickets, they can come in and decide which ones they want to see. So you have a choice of buying complete festival pass or you buy individually, okay? Anyway, so we are part of the sound crew setting up all these stages. We set up these stages and we're learning everything. We are the sound crew, fantastic. I'm there, you know, I've come with all this experience, you know, I've worked with all these bands in India, mind blowing, is that and the other. So we are there over there, I have this engineer and I'm thinking I'm going to be put in as an assistant in front of house or monitors or whatever, all this kind of stuff. And there is this talk happening and there's a sound crew of approximately, well, I would say around 150 sound people, including myself. So the sound boss is over there and I am introduced along with three other apprentices who have come in over there and we have been given the official 
hat for the festival and we have given the official access all areas badge which is a big thing because that means you can go in anywhere no one will question you and i was given a box of paint and i was given brush and i was given overalls and that overalls had the company's name on it with north sea jazz festival and i am saying to myself what the fuck is this and this was my job and my job was something very simple my job was to take this can of paint with this brush and go to every stage there are 13 stages before a band came on i had to go take this paint and touch up any dirt or patches which were left on the wedges and side fills and monitors because the everything had to look spick and span that was my job for 3 days for starting at 2 o'clock in the afternoon till about 2:33 at night there was no closing hour so this was my job and i am saying to myself here i am with all this experience here i am i have recorded bands i have engineered bands i have won awards all those kind of things what the fuck am i doing over place like this with a pretty paint brush and a can of paint and the road boss or the crew boss over there could see that happening in my head now they, don't forget so there were 149 people watching me getting this pep talk from this road boss because this all happened in one room in front of everybody because there's nothing to hide so he told me something he's like shatru i understand you know your problem that you know this is what you thought you would come to do and this is the kind of job that you've been given to do and uh, you know you thought that you would be actually working with bands etc 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 but this what the hell is this kind of stuff so he said let me tell you one thing this job that you're doing is really important because the bands that are coming on are superstar bands they are used to a certain kind of ethic they're used to certain kind of class which is what the north sea jazz provides okay so the stage has to look immaculate you are the reason why that happens let me tell you very importantly if you do not do your job properly the stage manager does not green light the next band that comes on because he will inspect the stage he will find blemishes he will find problems on stage and he will not allow the next band to start unless those situations are taken care of and as you know these festivals are run like clockwork if the band is supposed to finish at 2:30 the next band will come on at 2:45 15 minute change over time is what takes place in all these festivals none of these bands are getting sound checks and they are big bands so you have to be able to do your job so the moral in all of this is there is no job that is too small however experienced you might be because that front of house engineer who you wanted to be once you become your front of house engineer you will find a person who has not done the paint job and you will be pissed off as to why the job has not been done and you will not be able to start your gig so please understand that you are the starting block for a successful festival for the band having a good experience and most importantly for you being called next year and being paid for it that is what i mean to say no job is too small to learn to take higher steps to reach where you want to.